in this video we're going to focus on how to add different colors in Chart.js. So basically it's a Chart.js background color where we can automatically add different colors with the help of a formula in JavaScript. So this is a part of the Chart.js uh, Chart background color series and so far what we have is this here where I showed you where you can alternate these colors consistently. It loops through a circle or it loops basically through the list of colors we have. However, you might say, well, this is all very impressive, but it is not practical for your use case because you have maybe 10 different items to compare and they should be 10 different colors. However, you don't want to hard code them in here, so I understand that. So let's start and look how we can do this. All right, to do this, we're going to use a lot of array options here. We're going to use multiple array functions together. This is very important and if you don't know anything about arrays or you're not familiar with that, I highly recommend you to check my array or Chart.js array series covering many different array topics. As you can see in 19 videos as of now, very useful. It will help you a lot. So, first of all, I will show you here how we can do this. The first thing what we need to do is we need to know how many data points we have. And to know this, we have to use one of the arrays, which is the array length. So basically here, we're going to create a new item. And this item, or the new constant, will be the, let's say, the labels. Because with the labels, we can define the color. So we say labels here. So we say here, the following. Labels, or this is the labels constant, equals whatever is in here. And these are not colors. But these are the labels, remember that. So this is just the text itself. And in here, we just equal labels. All right, so that's the first thing. So once we know this, or once we have this here, we can now start to calculate the length. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If I do labels and we say length, at this moment, and we just put it in a console log, console log, you will see now we will get the length of the array. If I refresh here, oh, I see there's an error. Let's double check here. Uh, length labels is not a function. I guess it should be like this. Sorry. Save that. Refresh. There you are. So what happens? It understands we have eight data points here, or basically eight labels. So this would mean if we have eight labels, we can now loop eight random colors. So to do this, we're going to use eventually the for for the for loop. So we say here four, and then we say here i, i equals zero, and then we put in here the state. Then we say here, we keep on looping i as long as i, and i stands for iteration, but you can use any character, but usually the i is the common one, and iteration means repeating yourself multiple times. So we say here, we iterate this as long as i is smaller than the labels length that we have here above, which is eight. So we can remove this, and then we can start working with the colors here. So then once we have this, eventually, now we put in here the color formula, which will be eventually this part here, the background colors, where we get these values here, or we're going to loop them through. So for this, we're going to use the RGB colors. So we create here a new constant. And basically, this constant we need to create three of those. Is one is for the R, one is for the B, and one is for the G, RGB. So it's a red, green, and blue. All right. So we say constant here R, and then we do the following. We're going to create a math floor. So we always go down with this. All right. Math floor. This is like a rounding the value down to the nearest integer. All right. So when we have that, then we say math. And then dot random. And I'm going to explain to you why we use the floor as well, because the random here itself is from zero up to one only, meaning it's 100% or 0% or up to 100%. Then we have this random here, and then we say here, we multiply this by 255. All right. So what do we really, ex what do we have here, or what is this exactly? Well, basically it's this. We have this random here it will always be from zero up to one. So imagine if you give a random color of number of 0 0.55. So then we need to multiply it by 255. So 
so we get a color but of course you will get maybe a color like this maybe the, the value would be I have no idea what it is but most likely it would be something with 200 or 140 point etc etc all right so we want to remove all of these parts here basically because this is not useful so we want to floor it going down just only to this here so we go to the nearest integer and that's the integer of 140 or we're round out we're always round down here in this case so because it's a floor so this is what basically does and then we have the color combination why 255 well if you work with rgb colors rgb the highest value is 255 and the lowest value is zero zero stands for black and 255 stands for uh, white all right of course not 100 percent because if you have the first one only the r it would be 100 percent red and if the g is 100 percent green and b is 100 percent blue and if you have 255 of each of those then 100 percent of r, everyone means all white so the full colors of each equals white and the missing colors well there's a lot of color theory but that would, but that's probably the most important part you have to understand so we have this now then what we need to do is we create a constant as well another one and in this constant and one more is the g for green rgb and mb all right so once we have what we need to do now is well basically what we can do is we can create a console log first we create a console log and in here we're going to just make this so we have this basically what we want in here rgba and i'm going to use the a for alpha values as well but we will set the alpha value as a fixed value then we say here basically if this will be 255 or a random number and this will be zero so basically it will be this what we want to show and this will be 100 comma and then 0 0.2 for the alpha value so this is what we want so let's copy this we put it in here now right so once we have this the only thing what we need to do now is convert this to the values we have here so what I need to do here because these are string values here now right so this is a string and there is a plus and what we do we do plus a, a constant which is a variable and then here again we say here plus because what we're doing here is concatenation so we concatenate this and then we do here again and then we say here a quotation mark plus and then what will be this this will be the g so that will be the constant g there is a plus quotation and then again here quotation plus and this will be the b for blue and then we do here plus quotation there we have this and then finally because we want to end this up because we have here the console log remember it's basically this part that we're interested in which is exactly similar to here to this here so this will be that all right so once we have this you will see we get now eight random colors let's save this refresh oh unexpected uh syntax here let's double check we have this we have that what is going on number 24 number 24 we have this here um what is going on all right sorry this is a for loop so i need to say here iterated then we have to do the incremental here iteration incremental or we increment it by one every time it iterates if not we will have an endless loop and then you get an error so once we save this and now we refresh works as you can see here now we get all these random colors here however these random colors are still not in here why we need to push the values if you wonder what is push check the array series they're pushing it basically the pushing in short pushing would be adding it to an array but check the array series to really learn more about this all right so then we say here what we need to do here is basically create a constant and this constant will be our background color i'm going to just copy this here and then i will not put a capital c here but I will put a small letter c just for just to avoid that we're not getting any conflicts here and then we say here equal what exactly equal nothing why empty array so we have here these colors that's being pushed so what we have to do now is basically here we say this array we want to push these colors here so we say push and then the value will be what exactly this here copy this put it in there remove this one here this is now we've done that 
Now, once we have this here, we can copy this here and we say this equals our new array that we push. So if we save this now, refresh, there you are. As you can see here, we can do it again and again and again. So it looks beautiful. And you might say, well, what about the border color? What if we can match the border color as well? Well, let's make that one as well. So for the border color, exactly same process. Basically here, constant. And then we say here, border color small equals this. We make this array. And then what we do is the same story here. We say the border color, border color, the push. And the only difference here is almost exactly the same with one exception. We want to make a solid color here. Why? Because the border should be very visible. If I save this now, hard coded alpha, and uh, A stands for uh, a pad, was it, uh, on the alpha value, sorry, that's the alpha, alpha value or opacity. However, here, alpha 1 means 100% visible and no transparency at all. So once we have this, we can now remove all of this here, delete this. Get this border color here, put it in there, save this, and refresh. And there you are. Now we get all of these random colors here consistently. And what's very nice is if we would add up a new item here in the, in the background, or basically here, you have a new item here. And let's make this, uh, I don't know, a new. I'll just say new, and this will be also a new value here, and this will be a 10. We save this. Now new gets a color as well. So there you are. So with this, you can create random colors in Chart.js automatically. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box, the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.